Good evening everyone, it's Gavin again, um, coming back with another another update. This one's slightly different to, to the last couple though. Um, to start with, I'll just show you, it'll count as a atomic cooker update just because it's here. So, so this is where I'm at with my entry for uh, Captain, Captain Napalm's competition. So as you can see, I got the two halves of the hull together. There's a bit of a step there, but it won't be noticeable when the, the tracks are on. So, so I've um, added, because the front hull is no longer the actual official Firefly one, the machine gun was still there. So I've added the slight, the uh, kind of armor over the top of the, because the Fireflies didn't have a hull machine gun. Um, added some storage. So I'm going for that picture that, if you remember, so I had a load of track, but uh, it's Churchill track, and I tried to make a mold of it here using some instant mold, and it looks quite good there. But then this is actually how it comes out, and it's it's not that detailed. So I don't think I'm going to bother. I um, the one of the tanks I bought for this came with the plastic tracks. These. So what I've done is cut the bottom off, trimmed it up, and added a section here, and also then along here of spare track. So you can see where I've had to do all this fillering here. It doesn't look smooth, but it, it is. So you can see there was a bit of a step in the two holes there, and you can still see the joins slightly. But I kind of like that because in the real ones you could actually see that still. There was still weld mark down there. I'm not going to bother trying to sculpt that in, but. Uh, you can see a slight line down there which might shine through the paintwork when it's done. Um, some more storage and the applique armour it says. Because the you can see there are two different widths, the hulls, so I had to add this little bit of plastic card here so that the tracks fit, although that's saying I'm just going by the, the normal metal ones. I'm hoping to use the duckbill ones when they come which have the extra bits on the end of each track link but I was using these just I'm hoping that you know, general size wise they're the same just to make sure that everything was going to fit so I think it will but I'm still waiting on this track so we'll see um, if if it's going to be much longer I'll probably just use the normal tracks um, so I can at least make a move with it and here's the turret so there's the two crewmen poking out like there is in the um, like there is in the picture, nice big long gun barrel. I did drill out the hole in the <laughs> drilled out the barrel. Some more storage, a little bit of track there, a little bit of track there, some cheek armor, and an aerial on the back there. So that's that. Um, the main reason for this video is I had a bit of time, and um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I think you may have seen it before, but. I'm working on a 148 scale Apache kit. I haven't built a scale model in a long time. I used to build them a lot as a kid before I started in wargaming. And I just a couple of months back decided I would get a kit um, and, and build it up. I'm a big fan of the Apache. So it's built up, it's had its base coats on, and it's had a layer of weathering, which you can probably see. Now, the one I'm go the look I'm going for, if you give me a second is based on how the Apaches tend to look in Afghanistan. Um, now if you can see this, they have a really dusty effect. They have a real dusty look to them. So you can see here, um, there's fingerprints all over from the crew. Here on the steps there's a lot of dust. And um, frankly they look filthy all on the rivet lines here. They're just dirty and dusty and here it's gathering in the in the grills and under here and you can see all the panel lines and things here's a good picture of it here so there's dust gathering around here and so that's kind of effect I'm going for so it's been base coated green then I used um, a mix of the forge world grey ash and the forge world light earth pigments which are the only pigments I got mixed them together and got this kind of brown color. So I put that I put that all over, and um, you can see a bit on the canopy there, just in the edge, the kind of brown color it was, which is way too brown for that light 
sand colour that was there. So I thought, okay, well, if I try and fix this, I wonder how uh, how it will look. So I sprayed the entire thing in uh, matte varnish, some testers dull coat, and uh, the effect, I'm really, actually really pleased with it. You can see it really well on here. It's now gone a nice bright colour. It looks a lot more like dust and it's gathered and it looks a little bit white. There's almost kind of watermarks on here from when I tried to fix it before. But I quite like that. It's not something that's there, but it does rain in Afghanistan. If these are sitting dusty and they get a rain they get a load of rain on them, they're gonna the dust's gonna leak down and leave kind of watermarks. And they're, if they're obviously not bothering to clean all the dust right off the fuselage and stuff every time which uh, according to these pictures which are taken of an actual Apache in Afghanistan then they're clearly not so uh, so I'm okay with that I uh, quite like that effect I think it's it's subtle enough that it doesn't you can still tell it's green um, under this funny light it doesn't look but you know you can tell it's painted green it's painted in this uh, this dark matte, matte green and uh, and I think it's it's enough weathering that it looks dusty it looks used but it doesn't look doesn't look too bad. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, and luckily it's actually quite easy to paint. It's just green. Uh, I do need to just tidy up the tires a little bit and then dust them up. And I have started the the uh, excuse me the decaling. You can see someone there. They look really bright there, just under this light. But actually, they're quite subtle. Um, there's a few along the board, so I'm just just here at the cockpit just now. But I have micro saw and micro set, so they shouldn't sit. Well, they should sit okay. Um, they look a bit reflective under this light, but um, I w I com completely forgot to really kind of put them on before the uh, before the the weathering. But then I thought if I weather them up, I might chew through the decals and lose some of them. So. The cockpit's fully painted as well. These two spars, these two spars just here, actually need a quick, quick coat of paint. Apart from that, and on the canopy, they're grey. This is just uh, Vallejo masking fluid and then the primer and stuff. So that'll get taken off to reveal the transparent cockpit. Um, and uh, there's the rotor assembly with the the radome with the fingerprints on it. <laughs> I'll wipe them off. And the uh, markings on there. So, yeah, that's how that's coming on. So, I'll probably do an update on that when it's finished as well. And uh, also an update on the Tommy Cooker when it's progressed a bit more than it has, which it hasn't at the moment. Alright, I'll cut this now. It's getting a bit long for, for a bit of a waffle. So, um,. Thanks for watching, please remember to comment, rate and uh, subscribe if you want to um, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.